The Life of Koro-sensei, Assassination Classroom Koro-sensei was the homeroom teacher of Class 3E of Kunugigaoka Junior High School and the secondary protagonist and anti-hero of Assassination Classroom. He claimed to be responsible for creating a permanent crescent moon and added that he planned to destroy the Earth after teaching Class 3E for a year. Prior to being a teacher, he was the assassin known as the Reaper. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Koro-sensei. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Background As a child, he was born into one of the vilest and corrupt slums in an unknown country. It was an environment where everybody could easily betray one another to the point that one could only trust oneself. Through these hardships, he decided to become an assassin, eventually becoming the master assassin known as the Reaper. Immediately, his talents were shown as he left a tremendous trail of corpses in his wake. He became notorious for breaking through even the most strict security teams to assassinate his targets without any hitch. All this changed after assassinating a wealthy businessman and father. The man's child witnessed the killing and the child became enamored with the beauty of the kill, requesting that the Reaper train him as his apprentice. Eager for the assassination opportunities that an apprentice could give, the Reaper took in the boy and trained him. He taught him everything he knew, all while still instilling respect and fear in him and letting him know the difference in power between them. Though he only saw him as a tool rather than a real student, after several successful jobs, the apprentice turned on the Reaper as he was attempting to escape a prison facility. The apprentice, now the current Reaper, sought his master's title and abandoned him just to fuel his ego. Betrayed, the Reaper was captured and thrown into an undocumented research laboratory run by Kotaro Yanagisawa. Yanagisawa's research goal was to create large amounts of antimatter by having it piggyback on the growth of human cells. It was there that he met and befriended Aguri Yukimura, a teacher who was at the time in an arranged and abusive marriage to Yanagisawa. She was brought in to keep a closer eye on him as Yanagisawa considered her easily expendable if he attempted to break free and take her hostage. As the tests continued, the Reaper began to slowly bond with her and became fond of her as she worked on compiling exam questions for her class and it was during this time he learned what compassion was. However, a problem arose when Yanagisawa and his researchers began to question what would happen to Koro-sensei's antimatter cells when he died. To answer this question, Yanagisawa and his team launched a small automated lab onto the moon to safely test the possibility of what happened if a subject with Koro-sensei's antimatter-infused cells were to die, in this case, a small lab rat. When the rat eventually died at the end of its lifespan, it caused a volatile reaction with the antimatter in its body. The antimatter created a chain reaction that turned 70% of the moon's matter into antimatter, which then completely exploded. Upon seeing this, Yanagisao was horrified at the results. His subordinates then began running calculations and discovered that the same thing would happen to the Reaper by March 13th of the following year. Earth would be destroyed the same way if left unchecked, prompting Yanagisawa to order his subordinates start preparations to kill him. A mortified Aguri overhears this and decides to go speak to the Reaper and tell him their findings. When she does, however, he reveals that it doesn't bother him, as he expected a death such as this from the start. Telling Aguri to leave, he finally unleashes his full power that he gained from the experiments to escape as a visibly fuming Yanagisawa watches from a nearby security camera. The Reaper then proceeds to rampage violently, killing off several guards and in the process damaging Yanagisawa's left eye. However, during the escape, Aguri is mortally wounded when she landed in the line of fire of a special trip mine meant for him, to the latter's horror. He then laments the fact that if he hadn't wasted his skills on killing, he would know how to save her. Her final wish to him was to teach the students of Class E, all while thinking of what a wonderful teacher he will be. With this, she also left a large tie as a present for him to take. Depressed but not broken, the Reaper vowed to help those children. He left a note, then left the facility for a nearby mountain, and then uses various items on the mountain to create a new set of clothes to suit his new role as a teacher. Although not responsible for destroying 70% of the moon, he takes the blame and tells the world's leaders that he'll destroy the Earth as well in March of the following year, and requests to become the homeroom teacher for Kunigigaoka Junior High School's Class 3E. The world leaders accept the deal, hoping it'll give them a chance to assassinate him. However, they also added another condition. He would not harm the students. Introduction, Assassination Time. As Koro-sensei starts the attendance, he asks the one who's on day duty to issue command. Koro-sensei was then ambushed by his students with automatic rifles. However, he dodges the bullets while doing the attendance. Koro-sensei is pleased that there are no absentees, though he's also ashamed that nobody could hit him. He tells them that they should devise a plan together. 
The students complained that even if he were to get hit by the BB pellet bullets, he would just endure it. Koda-sensei demonstrates that those BB bullets, created specially in America for harming him, are harmless to the students, and shoots his right feeler off. However, Koda-sensei regenerates his feeler back after a few seconds. He warns them not to use them indoors except for killing him. He then tells them that they'll be able to kill him before graduation, and decides to tidy the class up. Later, he questions Kimura of which one of his four tentacles is the weird one, which Kimura responds that the blue tentacle is the odd one, and Koda-sensei is then pleased with his correct answer. He then catches a bullet with his chalk. He becomes red and punishes Nakamura, saying that her assassination meddles with her study. When lunchtime starts, Koda-sensei decides to go to China while grading his students' tests. Koda-sensei later came back with a missile souvenir after having been ambushed by the self-defense in the Sea of Japan. Nagisa asks him if it was troublesome that he was targeted, but Koda-sensei tells him that he doesn't really mind and that it shows proof of his vast power. The class starts again and Koda-sensei decides to assign a poem, and the one who is finished should bring it to him. Koda-sensei was asked by Kayano what name they should refer him as, and Koda-sensei tells her that they can decide. Koda-sensei sees Nagisa walking up to deliver the letter. Then he was suddenly struck by him but he easily blocked it. However, Nagisa retaliates with a BB pellet grenade, much to Koro-sensei's surprise. However, Koro-sensei uses his shed skin to protect himself and Nagisa, which he can only use once a month. After revealing his ability, he turns black with extreme anger and calls out the ringleaders of the BB pellet grenade. Koro-sensei then roams around town with his Mach 20 speed and brings the nameplates from their houses. He tells the students due to the agreement to not harm the students, if they try the same assassination method again, then he would annihilate anyone they know. He was questioned by Terasaka of the degree of the assassination, and Koda-sensei corrects him by saying that it was excellent and praises Nagisa for keeping a natural body movement. However, Koda-sensei admonishes them for having no regard for Nagisa's life. He then advises them that they should use an assassination method that will make everyone happy, and that they should use their hidden talents. After seeing a burn mark on the table, he remembers the incident from his past. First Semester Apart from avoiding every assassination attempt by the class, Koro-sensei teaches them valuable life lessons and gives the individual students the confidence in themselves, despite being placed in a discriminatory Class 3E. When going up against the school's discriminatory education policy led by the board chairman, Gakuho Asano, Koro-sensei lost in the midterm exams by having been focused too much on getting all of Class E ranked in the top 50. At the time, however, it was also to teach the students the importance of having a second blade, since in the event Koro-sensei is killed, the students still have to plan for their future in life regardless of who claims the 10 billion yen bounty. During the exhibition match between Class E and the school's baseball club, Koro-sensei coached the class in countering the star players' pitches and helped them win despite Asano's interventions. While the students are grateful that their teacher is doing all of this for their benefit, they still get annoyed by his various antics, such as eavesdropping for juicy gossip and getting too cocky, which normally gets Koda-sensei into trouble. During the semester, Koda-sensei had been challenged to a duel against the second transfer student, Ituna Horibe, accompanied by the mysterious Shiro. To his and everyone's surprise, Horibe has the same tentacle implants as Koda-sensei, which explains why Horibe had earlier called Koda-sensei his brother. Although visually disturbed by Ituna's tentacles and the well-planned strategies devised by Shiro, Koro-sensei outmaneuvers the pair and defeats Ituna. Before Koro-sensei could get any answers regarding Ituna's tentacles, the pair retreats but not before vowing to return. The pair kept their vow and returned to ambush Koro-sensei, but he was rescued by the students who were none too pleased that they were used and almost killed indirectly by Shiro. With the finals approaching, Koro-sensei motivates the class into getting first place in any of the five subjects, with the reward being that they have the right to shoot off one of his tentacles. Knowing that this will slow down his speed, the class takes up the challenge enthusiastically, but also gets drawn into a wager with Class A. The results show that Ryo Nakamura, Yuma Isagai, and Manami Okuda scored first place in English, Social Studies, and Science, respectively. However, Koro-sensei had been conned to have four additional tentacles destroyed by Terasaka, Hazama, Muramatsu, and Yoshida tied for first place in Home Economics, a subject Koro-sensei tried unsuccessfully to disregard as not being a core subject. The class's plan is to attempt their ambitious assassination on a holiday island resort in Okinawa, which was their prize for winning the wager with Class A. Assassination Island Arc Arriving on the island resort, Koro-sensei participates in many activities with the class seemingly not knowing the true purpose of his student's agenda ahead of the assassination. At the end of the day, Koro-sensei had been sunburnt to the point that no one can read his burnt face. 
He sheds his skin as his monthly routine, but unwittingly weakens himself and wasted one of his defense measures. The class then makes him watch an embarrassing film of his antics and unusual hobbies as a way to mentally weaken him. When it finishes, he realizes too late of the high tide as the seven shoot off his tentacles. From there, his surroundings change dramatically as the students trap him in a hydraulic water cage and fire anti-sensei BBs all around him. As he senses two BBs fired by Chiba and Hayami, Koda-sensei was forced to use his last resort, turning himself into a ball with an unbreakable shield surrounding him at the cost of forsaking his mobility. Later that night, 10 of his students collapse to an artificial virus. The mastermind behind the virus puts them to ransom and demands that Koda-sensei be delivered by Nagisa and Kayano to the Mountain Hotel in exchange for the antidote. Although unable to move, Koda-sensei assists the 15 remaining students to infiltrate the hotel and even helped call out commands while simultaneously distracting one of the hired hitmen. When the class discovers the mastermind to be a short-lived PE teacher, Akira Takauka, Koda-sensei is forced to watch him and Nagisa battle it out for the antidote. The situation was so grave that Koda-sensei grew worried and even advised Karasuma to intervene should anything bad happen. Fortunately, Nagisa was able to defeat Takauka, and the ill students had never been in any danger, the virus being a fake. The next day, Koda-sensei was sealed away in concrete slabs by Karasuma in a vain effort to kill him, but he manages to return to his normal form. Before leaving the island, Koda-sensei organized the Test of Courage. It's supposedly a haunted attraction, but his ulterior motive is to create more juicy gossip by pairing up the students to spark any romances. Freaking Koda-sensei. <laughs> the class immediately realizes what Koda-sensei had planned, and the later half of the pairs instead turn the tables on the teacher by making him scared. Second semester. Much like the first semester, Koro-sensei continued teaching Class 3E some valuable life lessons. He gave the class some practical experience to their newly learned ability to free run taught by Karasuma by organizing a game of cops and robbers, and inspired Yuma Isogai to lead his class to victory against Class A during the athletic festival. Koro-sensei briefly suffered a loss in trust with his students when they suspect him of crimes he didn't commit due to his perverted hobbies. He was vindicated when he and a few of the skeptical students find the culprit to be Shiro and Ituna, who once more ambush him using the same strategy employed by Class 3E during the summer vacation. This time, Koro-sensei was able to convince Ituna to join them after the latter was coldly abandoned by Shiro for the repeat failures and remove the tentacles from him. As the midterms approached, some of the students started to take shortcuts by studying and training at the same time, free running through the town despite being expressly forbidden to do so. This soon gets them into trouble when they surprise an old man and cause him to break his leg. Koro-sensei was furious upon learning of this and slapped the students involved in his anger despite the condition he was not to harm them. To teach them humility, Koro-sensei forbids them to study for two weeks and help out at the nursery the old man runs, which consequently lowered their test ranks, save for karma. The students' actions had also attracted the attention of the professional hitman known as the Reaper. When Koro-sensei was away, the hitman took the class hostage to lure the target in and Koro-sensei was soon captured. They were later freed when Karasuma defeated the Reaper. Afterwards, Koro-sensei held a careers consultation for the class, wishing to know what their second blade will be should somebody succeed in killing him, while humorously avoiding each student's attempt to kill him. After hearing Nagisa's admission that he has the talent to become an assassin, Koro-sensei vows to support him despite the dangers of this path. He later disguised himself as Karasuma during a parent-teacher interview with Nagisa's mother Hiromi, who wants to transfer her son back to the main campus. But seeing her dominant personality and inferiority complex to make Nagisa follow the path in life she laid out for him, Koro-sensei refuses her request. That night, he saw Nagisa take out a hidden assassin in front of his mother and drove them both back to their house. During the school festival, Koro-sensei advises the students to use the mountain to find natural ingredients to make acorn noodles as a way to attract customers to travel the one kilometer trek from the main campus to the 3E classroom. In his final battle with Chairman Asano, Koro-sensei aided his students to triumph over Class A and even turned the tables when Asano himself arrived to kill him. There, Koro-sensei revealed that he based his teaching methods based on Asano's own methods in his early teaching career, and was responsible in Asano somewhat regaining his former kind personality. The end of the semester took a dangerous twist when Kaede Kayano launched a surprise attack on Koro-sensei, revealing to have implanted tentacles on herself. Koro-sensei managed to avoid falling into an anti-sensei Phoebe-filled pit by blasting a hole in the wall, prompting Kayano to recoil in instinct. Koro-sensei asked what happened to her afterwards, and she revealed to be the younger sister of Aguri Yukimura. 
drawing a surprise reaction from him and her classmates. At the student's insistence and seeing his past finally catching up to him, Koda-sensei agreed to tell the full story of his past, but not until Kayano is subdued. He and his class meet her at Kunigigaoka Park and the two start to fight. Immediately, Koro-sensei senses Kayano's subconscious fading as her tentacles start to dominate and asks the class to find a way to calm Kayano's bloodlust before she dies. Koro-sensei intentionally reveals his main weak point, his heart behind his crescent moon tie, and Kayano strikes. Although being gravely wounded, Koro-sensei pins her down, stating his promise to her sister not to let any of his students fall, allowing Nagisa to approach Kayano and kiss her into unconsciousness. Koro-sensei removes her tentacles and sees Shiro, who Koro-sensei now recognizes to be his jailer, Kotaro Yanagisawa, watching the whole thing with a masked accomplice. When Kayano wakes up filled with regret, Koro-sensei tells his class about his past as the original Reaper, bonding with Aguri during his captivity and promising to teach her students before she died during his escape. He also stated that even if no one managed to assassinate him by March, he would die along with the entire world. Final Semester at the start of the final semester, Koro-sensei greets his class with unusual enthusiasm. But he notices their unenthusiastic response even after the winter break, stemming from hearing his past. While Karasuma is worried that their motivation to kill is weakened, Koro-sensei only states how the class will respond. The teachers later arrive after seeing a student meeting taking place, but degenerates into a violent scuffle between Nagisa and Karma. Koro-sensei mediates the situation by suggesting that the two factions, those wanting to kill Koro-sensei and those wanting to save him, settle their differences by playing a paintball game, with the winning side having their opinion to be the final say in uniting the class again. Koro-sensei later watches the battle unfold from a raised platform and commentates on some of the individual students' hidden talents. When the fights reduce the last man standing between Nagisa and Karma, he compares each of the boys' specialized skills. Eventually, Nagisa wins when Karma surrenders voluntarily, but the class has been reunited under a common goal once more. Karasuma later speculates that the war is what Koro-sensei had planned all along, another lesson to educate the students. Searching for a way to save their teacher, the class eventually comes across information that could meet their purpose. The information is based on American research data experimenting how to neutralize the antimatter without causing it to explode. However, the experiments are being conducted on board the International Space Station by trained personnel. Koro-sensei suggests a crazy plan to the students to infiltrate a Japanese launch site and have two students replace the dummies in the shuttle and essentially hijack the space station. At the site, the class quietly infiltrates the facility and delegates Nagisa and Karma to be the hijackers. As the two launch into space, Koro-sensei barely manages to keep up with the launch shuttle as he wishes the pair luck. The boys return to Earth with the data, and Koro-sensei helps Ritsu steer the shuttle back to the classroom. After bribing an irritated Karasuma with a successful experiment of sending two living beings into space without any harm done, he soon learns from the research data that the chances of him self-destructing in March is less than 1%. Moreover, the chemical he and Okudo worked on back in the first semester that liquefied him also neutralizes the antimatter's effects. Despite learning of this, Nagisa and the class resolve to at least continue their mission to kill their teacher until graduation. Hearing this, Koro-sensei throws a quick-fire spontaneous round of festivities the class didn't experience during the winter break due to their depressed state after hearing his past. While he celebrates, the class made numerous attempts to kill him, but their target speed and their own sloppiness meant their efforts were for nothing. The teacher soon brings the class back down to reality by announcing the high school entrance exams is happening in two weeks' time and that he will hold another careers consultation afterwards to discuss the students' futures after graduation. When the entrance exams arrive, Koro-sensei wishes every student good luck with his usual enthusiasm, unwittingly embarrassing them in the process. Afterwards, he tries to console a devastated Takebayashi who bombed out in getting to the top high school as his first preference. He also punishes every student that utters any words synonymous with fail with an outdated hairstyle known as 7-3. The class eventually realized that their target was baiting them purposefully to entertain himself and try to kill him in anger. A day before Valentine's Day, Koro-sensei influences Maihara to spend time with Hinata Okano as a way to catch more love gossip. Maihara took his advice but also knew of Koro-sensei's motives to spy on them. Koro-sensei spent much of the day spying on the class for love gossip, but was easily distracted by Kayano's photo of Aguri in a swimsuit and the chocolate present, preventing him from taking pictures of Kayano and Nagisa. 
During nighttime, when he continues to admire the photo of Aguri in a swimsuit in the staff room, Koro-sensei dodges Chairman Asano's sudden attack and was offered the choice to continue teaching after March. However, Koro-sensei declined and they end up chatting together for the whole night. With the whole class having been accepted into their top preferences for high school, Koro-sensei wanted to collate a graduation photo album using the 10,000 photos he had already taken, most of them being the students' private or embarrassing moments. Because remember, Koro-sensei is a tentacle monster and he's a creeper at the same time, but also kind-hearted. Believing this not to be enough, he then gathered the class for a quick round-the-world tour, taking snapshots and leaving without any chance for sightseeing. Afterwards, he met the students individually for another careers consultation, having to meet Nagisa last. He's happy that Nagisa decided to become a teacher, and supports his decision. After Karasuma leaves the classroom with Koro-sensei compiling his graduation photo album, a weaponized beam of light strikes the classroom. Much to the government's surprise, Koro-sensei escapes the space weapon, dubbed the Spear of Heaven, but not unscathed. He tries to fly away, but is blocked by the impenetrable Earth Shield, which also extends underground. Trapped on the mountain, Koro-sensei is impressed and seemingly admits defeat. He continues to work on the graduation album, though he wished to see the students one last time. On the final night of the deadline, Koro-sensei and the class happily reunites. Briefed of the situation and that the satellite weapon would fire again in 90 minutes, he imparts with one last life lesson to his students. To confront and navigate through society head-on and not reject it as he once did. The Ryo Nakamura presents their teacher a small cake to mark the event Aguri declared to be his birthday, the day when she and Koro-sensei first met each other. Having not eaten any sweets for nearly a week, Koro-sensei starts drooling on the cake but nonetheless feels happiness. Before he could blow out the cake, however, the cake was destroyed by Shiro, accompanied by Koro-sensei's former princess, number two, who is now a hideous tentacled monster. The two proceed to fight, where it was obvious to everyone that number two was able to reach speeds at Mach 40, and Koro-sensei was barely able to defend himself. Furthermore, Shiro injected himself with a tentacle seed to become superhuman while retaining his intelligence to support the apprentice. When Koro-sensei begins to dodge their attacks more effectively, Shiro orders number two to attack the defenseless class. As his natural duty, Koro-sensei takes the full brunt of the apprentice's attacks to protect them, and he declares that protecting them isn't his critical weakness, but rather the happiest gift he had been given. Koro-sensei continues wearing himself down to protect them until Kayano fires a shot at number two to buy her teacher time to heal himself. Despite Koro-sensei's protests, Kaino was able to damage one of number two's tentacles, but was pierced right in the chest, the same manner as her sister. Seeing all this, Koro-sensei turns black as a sign of his rage. Shiro injects the second reaper with a needle, supposedly a stimulant of some sort, in order to match his power more easily. As Reaper 2.0's attack hurtles towards his heart, Koro-sensei stops it with white energy, much to Shiro's surprise. Fusing all his emotions and colors together, he uses his ranged energy explosion tactic, blasting away both the Reaper 2.0 and Shiro. While Shiro is humiliatingly disintegrated by the barrier, Koro-sensei knifes his apprentice in the chest. The two share one last exchange, where Koro-sensei acknowledges his former student's wish and promises to start over should they meet on the other side, before the Reaper is also disintegrated. Koro-sensei returns to the students and starts treating Kayano's wounds, having collected her blood prior to the droplets hitting the ground even while fighting his opponents. As the students celebrate Kayano's miraculous recovery, Koro-sensei stares up the night sky wondering whether he had successfully fulfilled his promise to Aguri. Final Moments Koro-sensei then collapses out of fatigue from his fight with Reaper 2.0 and after noticing the laser's light intensifying, announces that now was the time for the class to kill him. Once the class reluctantly decides to pin him down, Koro-sensei tells his students that he left them each a book of advice as a farewell gift and that he would announce one last roll call. As he calls out the list of names, he reminisces on how he's proud of his students who gave meaning to his life. Nagisa, who chose the delivering blow, becomes overwhelmed by his emotions. In response, Koro-sensei softly places a tentacle on his cheek and tells him that he wants Nagisa to kill him with a smile on his face. After giving each other their final farewells, Koro-sensei is stabbed in the heart and his body dissipates into numerous particles of light. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.